Hello everybody, my name is Adam. Thank you so much for joining me today because today I'm going to be talking about my accent artisan story which is really about how I teach English and what led me to do it that way. So let me take you back for a second when I was at secondary school, high school. Uh, I really, really, really wanted to go to the UK and to study at the Cambridge University or Oxford University. I felt like my English was good enough at the time to just go and study there, but there was one thing I was concerned about, which was my accent, because, you know, Brits have a reputation of pretty harsh language or accent standards, and so I was afraid that I would be seen as just another stereotypical foreigner from the East. There was another thing that came to mind when I was kind of pondering this decision though, because before that I was at this conference thing, it was an international thing, and I got to talk to this lady, I think she was a translator or a teacher or both, and presented her with, with my idea and, you know, that I would learn how to speak like a British person, essentially, including the accent. And she was furious with me. <laughs> she thought that it was disingenuous, that I was basically becoming or pondering becoming a liar and that it was completely wrong and I should definitely not do that under any circumstances because, well, I'd be kind of sacrificing my own personality. And I've got to say, that hurt me pretty bad because I felt like I was really interested in it. Uh, I was wondering if I could do it or not, you know, it was cool. And she made me feel like, like a bad guy, basically, like, like a liar and, uh, and a treacherous person and someone who was trying to trick everyone and lie to everyone, which is not a great feeling. And so, well, I was actually pondering, scrapping the whole thing, like being like, okay, this is my accent, this is where I come from, screw it, um, let's just not deal with this, don't, not worry about this at all, and I'm gonna just talk the way I'm right now. So, yeah, I was, I was totally thinking about discarding the whole thing altogether. But... Then I had this other thought, which is very simple. It's not all about me. I mean, of course, I didn't want to sacrifice my, my personality, but we're, we're social creatures, right? We, we don't live in isolation most of the time. <laughs> and so we interact with, with one another. And it's not about me simply means that I wanted the people that I was talking to understand me in a way that I wanted to be understood, right? So it's, in other words, for me, it's great to understand, but it's even better to be understood by others. So when, then, when that happened, I was kind of clear, uh, I've decided, okay, this is the path that I want to walk on. Uh, what that entailed, though, was basically a lot of research. I had to figure out uh, quite a few things, a lot of things, um, including speech therapy, logopedia, um, teaching practices, teaching met methods and methodologies, obviously, psychology, a lot of psychology, um, neurology as well, neural, neural science, um, and muscle memory, that really comes back to the, spe to the speech therapy. But all of these things and more, I, I kind of had to figure out and then deconstruct and learn how to put them back together in the right way so that they would work. Okay, so while that whole thing, uh, the, the big plan, if you will, was going on, uh, there were other problems that were sort of popping up here and there, as they, were, as they are, as they do. 
I identified them as, as myths because I am not a native English speaker. My parents are not native English speakers. Um, I've never lived in an English speaking country. Um, I visited, obviously. And the, the, there's just so many myths that people have about this. They will tell you that it's impossible to sound like a native English speaker because you need to have at least one parent that is a native speaker or you need to spend years living in England or America or wh wh wherever or, or you need to start when you're like one year old or something like that. There's just many of these and uh, even now they still, they still pop up actually and none of them are true. That's my big answer to that. None of them are true, it is teachable. And, of course, I'm the living proof of that. So, there you go, yeah. So all of this really um, gave me the confidence and certainty, if you will, to, to keep going, to walking this path and teaching English this way, because I really believe that especially through the muscle memory thing, if you teach people how to move and they learn how to produce the, the correct sounds and then grammar and everything else kind of follows because it's a very physical thing. And so that's how I teach English today. And uh, again, I'm a living proof of that. You can achieve that too if you so desire. And because I think, I think this should be like a revolution in teaching languages in general, really, because any language is a combination of certain movements, right? I started working on this app, this technological product, if you want, to make it accessible to a lot of people, uh, to make it cheap, obviously, and to make it fast as well. To do that, I had to sort of condense and test everything um, all the knowledge that I've acquired over many years of, you know, trial and error. And I've built this app, which is called Accent Artisan uh, today. And yes, you can check it out at accentartisan.com. Uh, that really takes you step by step in the correct sequence as well, which I think is, is super important. Sometimes we get the steps correctly, but we make them in the wrong sequence and then you end up uh, being lost and wasting a lot of time. Uh, and so I wrapped that whole thing up, put that into this product and uh, um, yeah, that really represents my journey today to spread the good word, help people learn English faster, sound more authentic, uh, help them demonstrate their personality, not through, let's say, difficulty of being understood, but through, you know, just, just talking and having personalities of their own and expressing that in, in all kinds of ways. So far, I've put standard British accents into, into the Accent Artisan app. Another choice that you can make is a standard, standard American accent that you can choose and learn. Uh, the procedure, the technique is really the same and these two ones will have to do for now. Hopefully more ones will come in the future. And yeah, that's it. That's it about my, about my story. Thank you for checking out this video. If you like it, please hit the subscribe button and the like buttons and all the good buttons down below and all around. And leave your comments down in the comment section. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So again, thank you so much. See you around.